The argument we had recently, me and Lawrence, was about oven gloves. Ridiculous. You know when you buy oven gloves, you've got two options? Like, I like to buy the two individual separate oven gloves, personally. You know, one for each hand, they're independent of each other, and you're free. As you always imagined you would be as an adult in your own kitchen. <laughs> to move as you please. He gets these oven gloves where you've still got an oven glove for each hand, but they're joined together by that filthy hammock. <laughs> most bacteria-ridden bit of fabric in your entire house. It's a quilted germ blanket. What, oh, what are you handling with that? Please let it be food. Please say it's food and pick it up with a germ cloth. I can't wait to manje whatever it is you're cooking. <laughs> That's your full range of movement with them. Why if someone attacks you? You can't defend yourself. It could happen just because you're getting something out of the oven doesn't mean the whole world stands still. What are you going to do? Garrot them, hoping a week's time they get a fungal infection? <laughs> they do not need to be joined together. No one's fed in those oven gloves for the sleeves of their jacket like a pair of winter mittens, to my knowledge. <laughs> Lawrence goes, they need to be joined together, James, so they don't get separated. Thank you very much. They're oven gloves. <laughs> they are oven gloves. Correct me if I'm wrong. They are not leaving the kitchen. Neither one of them is leaving the kitchen, are they? There's another glove in the kitchen. Where's the other one? Probably in the kitchen. <laughs> Probably somewhere in the kitchen. No one's leaving one other glove by the stove and hitting the town solo gloving it. <laughs> like a culinary Michael Jackson going up to people. You don't take that risk. I said to him, man, do yourself a favour. Take that onesie oven glove back to the shop. Buy yourself some proper oven gloves. This is what he says. He goes, bah. Oven gloves, schmuffin gloves. <laughs> That's how he argues. And he won, by the way. <laughs> Oven gloves, schmuffin gloves. He's won every argument we've ever had with that technique. Oven gloves, schmuffin gloves, bowling, schmoning, cinema, schminima. <laughs> the only argument he didn't win with that was one time when we argued about schmoozing. <laughs> if it already begins with a schmur, he ain't got nothing. Believe you me, when you're leaving the house off to do a bit of schmoozing and he's shouting schmoozing, schmoozing after you, it's more encouraging than dismissive. <laughs> Put a spring in my step. <laughs> Actually, really good at schmoozing. I thought I'd use this opportunity in the show to give you guys some schmoozing tips. You look like some happening cats. Maybe you're going to schmooze someone at an office too, you know? Now, a lot of people tell you, when you're schmoozing, have a good icebreaker. At the top of the conversation, break the ice. Right. What they won't tell you, at the end of the conversation, unbreak the ice. Right? Do you know anyone else sweeping in, taking advantage of all the lovely little ice cubes that you created? So freeze it over again before you leave. <laughs> just as you're leaving, just slide something under the fence like death comes to us all. Something like that. <laughs> Set the tone for the rest of the evening. Good luck anyone else penetrating that fortress. <laughs> Not a lot. When they're talking, you do a lot of nodding and lets them know that you're listening. Every now and again, just throw in something like, wow, I don't normally nod this much. Make them feel special, you know? 